Good morning and welcome. My name is Joanne O'Brien and uh, we have, this is our newcomers orientation for TM Forum Action Week. Just here with me this morning is Megan Lund from the TM Forum Collaboration Team. And Megan is going to take you through what is TM Forum and how to get started and any preparation reactivities that uh, will help you with regards to your end-to-end -end experience when you come on site at Action Week. Subsequent to that, I will take you through um, the event structure, how it is different from previous events, uh, how we have changed it based on our experiences of trialing different approaches over previous events and other workshops, and how we've incorporated that learning into this event. Uh, and I will also talk through a little bit about the, the Agile philosophies that we are covering or which is driving a lot of our thinking into this Action Week event. So over to you, Megan. Thanks so much, Joanne. So first of all, welcome everyone. Um, I know some of you on the call might be new to TM Forum or maybe you're returning to TM Forum. So I wanted to start off with just um, an overview of, of what TM Forum is and, and what uh, this organization works on. So the forum is a, a, a global nonprofit industry association, and uh, we exist to bring together our members um, to collaborate and to drive successful digital business transformation within each of our member companies. We have um, nearly a thousand member companies, made up of eight, uh, about 85,000 member professionals. Team Forum's been around for 25 years, so we have a, a really strong foundation of um, collaborating and, and working on these business principles. And like I mentioned before, we're located all around the world, so we, uh, you know, this is a way, by participating in Team Forum, you are tapping into kind of the global genius. Um, if you could move to the next slide, Joanne. So, um, just to talk a little bit about how the forum is structured, like I mentioned, we uh, exist to help our members on their uh, journey to digital transformation journey, and we do this via three of our strategic programs, which cover um, different kind of hot topics within digital transformation. Uh, the first topic, which you'll see in orange on this slide, is uh, our Agile Business and IT program, which um, it's kind of the bread and butter of, of transforming your IT and business operations to reduce costs, minimize risk, um, and, and improve you know, speed to market. So some of the topics that are, are covered within this program include um, you know, software-defined networking and network functions virtualization, digital transformation, and B2B2X partnering. Next, um, we have our robust customer engagement program, which is all about helping your organization maximize their market, market share um, while enhancing customer experience, customer growth, and loyalty. So some of the hot topics you would see within this program include things like customer experience management, metrics, data analytics, as well as privacy and security. The third program that TM Form has is called our Open Digital Ecosystem program, and when I think about this program, I think about partners. This, uh, to me, this program is all about um, delivering new services um, and, and managing those services across partners. So some of the topics you'll see in this program include um, topics in Internet of Things, B2B to X and partnering, as well as open digital management. Now, within each of these programs, you can see along uh, kind of the, the outside perimeter of the circle. Um, we have, you know, various resources uh, to, to, to support your organization, um, your organization's transformation uh, in, in, these, in these areas. So you can see we have research, we have conferences, we have training and certification and coaching, and then we have, if you look at the bottom, collaboration in communities and best practices, standards, and conformance, and that's um, the, the key parts of Action Week, I think. So if we go to the next slide, please, we can dig a little bit deeper into what those are and what those mean. So our collaboration programs and communities are where members can come together to develop, showcase, and promote um, the adoption of new innovative tools and digital standards. Um, so these, these standards are created and developed by our members and our, our member individuals within our member companies, um, and, and, and that's really who drives these collaboration projects. Now, what happens to um, kind of these tools and standards that are, are developed within these communities? Um, they become our best practices standards, best practices and standards. Um, you may have heard of frameworks um, and, and 
that's kind of our overriding term for all of these best practices and standards. Um, again, these are all you know member uh, member developed and and industry driven um, best practices. Okay. Now, if we go to the next slide, I'll dive a little bit deeper into um, how kind of collaboration works and 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 how these standards and best practices are developed by our members. So the, the, um, when, when these standards and best practices are developed, they're developed in units uh, called a TM Form Collaborative Project. And um, these projects are consist of a group of members committed to delivering uh, the best practice or standard in, in whatever topic area, solving whatever business issue. Um, TM Forum provides kind of the platform for this collaboration to happen in uh, a legal and uh, vendor non-specific uh, way. Um, and so TM Forum does provide a, a wealth of tools to help guide, uh, guide these projects. So you can see on the right, we provide things like online discussion areas, we have virtual meetings, a project workspace. If you're working on code, a GitHub repository. Um, but in addition to these online tools, we also have things like face-to-face -face meetings and um, you know, in-person validation exercises. And so this is what Action Week is. Action Week is kind of the face-to-face -face meetings part of a collaboration project. Um, so as as a member of a collaboration, a collaborative project, you can play a variety of roles, and we will describe these roles on the next page. Go to the next slide. So I know this is a lot, and we will be sharing these these uh, these slides, so you'll be able to look at this a little bit closer. Um, but if it's your first time at Action Week, you will probably be playing the role of um, a participant, observer, reviewer. This is how um, this is a great way to get started to begin digging a little bit deeper into what these projects are covering and begin contributing. You'll see there's some other key folks who will be a member of your project, um, folks like a sponsor who are the end users of whatever is going to be uh, created in the project, um, who you know help validate that this the what's being developed is is needed and is on the right track. You have mentors who are industry experts who again are are there to help lead and guide the project, and then importantly, um, there's you know a, a project and workstream leads to help guide uh, you know the day to day uh, development of the project. So I want to share this both so you can get an idea of what um, type of role you might play in a collaborative project, but also to show that there is kind of a development pathway here as you get more involved. So something very important um, to the TM Forum and to all of our members is protecting uh, our, everyone's intellectual property. And so TM Forum has a formal IPR policy to provide a framework for members to collaborate while protecting all of our forum members' intellectual property rights. And so you can um, view, I have a link at the bottom of this slide so that you can view and read um, a little bit more about this in detail. But there are some kind of key um, operational items that you should think about when you're joining um, a, a collaborative project. So uh, to, we'll just kick off. So in order to participate in a collaborative project, you will you must join that project's online project area. And this is very easy. I can, I, a little bit later in this in the webinar, I, sh I show you exactly how to do that. Um, so you'll need to join that project's online project area, and your organization's IP contact must approve your participation. So when you when you go and um, make this request, you will expect, ac accept the IPR licensing mode of the project, um, and the majority of projects, 99% within TM Form, operate under our our RAND, which is reasonable and non-discriminatory IPR mode. We have to be clear that. You know, our IPR policy is not an NDA, and there's no expectation of privacy on material submitted to TM Forum within a collaborative project. And as such, written contributions to the project must be submitted as a formal project contribution. Um, this is very easy. You, uh, once you're a member of a project, you can just go to the contrib contributions tab of that project area and fill out a short form. And if you're aware that there's any intellectual property included in your contribution, you must note this on the contribution form. 
Finally, the IPR mode that the project is operating under is announced at the start of each meeting for both virtual and face-to-face -face meetings, and at Action Week, the language to announce this is provided in the meeting room. So this is something you'll hear over the week as, um, you know, as meetings start, you will hear this language, so this is kind of the impetus for it. Um, if you have further questions or want to learn a little bit more, the link here is provided at the bottom of the page, and I encourage you to check that out. So let's, that, that was kind of an introduction to both TM Forum and kind of collaboration and how that all works. So I'd like to focus in now a little bit specifically on how you might prepare for Action Week. So I think one of the most important things you can do is um, review the strategic program toolkits and identify what's of a particular interest to both you and your organization so you know um, you can effectively plan your time and get started quickly when you arrive in Lisbon. So again, we'll send out these slides, and you can see there's some toolkits covering um, the, the big topics that will be uh, discussed at Action Week. Now, if there's a particular topic that you're interested in that, you know, if you're uh, a, a data analytics manager, you know that you're going to be in that session um, for, for Action Week, you should go um, and join that project before you arrive at Action, at Action Week. So this does a, a couple of things. First, it gets this administrative chore out of the way before you arrive. It also lets you take a look at what's been done so far and, and, and kind of explore, um, you know, what has happened already um, to give you some background. If you are going to make any written project contributions, those should be made by February 2nd, which is coming up on next Monday. Um, and, and also, you should review relevant project contributions prior to arrival. Um, so if, if someone else has, has um, made a written contribution, it's always good to review it before you arrive so that you're able to participate in discussions fully. Finally, another administration, uh, administrative item before arriving to Action Week would be to set up your Confluence Wiki account. and um, that takes 30 seconds, and we'll talk through it a little bit later on uh, a, a slide. Okay, so the next slide, if you are brand new to TM Forum, or maybe you're at a new organization that's a, a, a TM Forum member, the first thing you'll need to do is get started online. This is very easy. So you'll create a TM Forum login by visiting tmforum.org and clicking on the register button in the upper right corner. Um, you'll complete the registration form, and just a tip to be sure to use your company email address to ensure that you have access to all the members-only areas. By registering for this account, you'll not only gain access to our collaboration program and community, but also to the wealth of um, research, um, case study handbooks, all, all sorts of uh, members-only goodies. Now, once you have your TM Forum login, you'll be able to find and join um, a, a project that would be relevant to you that you might want to participate in at Action Week. Again, this is um, pretty easy, but it's, it's helpful to do before you arrive on site. So you do this by visiting community.tmforum.org. You'll first click on Projects on the left-hand side. You'll see it's circled here. Um, once you're on the Projects page, click on Projects Directory, and you'll see a full listing of, of all of the projects that are uh, currently, currently happening within the forum. Um, if you, once you find the project that you want to join, just click the Request Access button and accept the IPR licensing mode for the project. This project, the, the project request is then routed to your IP contact for approval, and you are copied on the email message to your IP contact so that you can follow up if needed. Okay. You heard me mention a couple of slides ago about the Confluence Wiki tool. So this is a, a collaborative wiki tool that TM Forum projects will use to create and collaborate on project deliverables. And within this tool, you'll find templates for things like um, TM Forum guidebooks, technical reports, business canvases, so that you can hit the ground running um, using kind of a, 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 a standard way to create these documents. Now, we're currently, it's currently in the works to connect our confluence areas directly to the project areas, but we're a couple of weeks away from that still. So for now, you'll need to create a login to access and edit pages in Confluence, and this takes about 30 seconds. And on the next slide, I have some links um, and, and some suggestions for the first steps that you might take in doing this. Um, to register for a Confluence account, again, it takes 30 seconds. You'll just click that link. Um, and uh, it asks for just first name, last name, and email. It, it's very, very quick. Um, there's great, great, great documentation on Confluence, so we recommend that you might read a little bit of the primer. Um, you can find your project spaces in the space directory within Confluence. 
Um, and if you want to practice using Confluence or, or try anything out, you can set up a personal space, which is kind of like a, a private page where you can, you know, try an experiment before uh, contributing to a project. So I know that was a lot um, of information very quickly, but like I said, these slides will be d distributed and we're happy to answer any questions. Excellent, Megan. Uh, thank you very much. So the, the, the primary things to remember really are to join the projects, be familiar with the fact that we operate under an IPR policy, join the relevant project. And I actually have a slide that will um, allow you to get more directly or, or be able to see the project associated with each of the streams at Action Week. So I think that's a very important point. Um, and uh, and thanks for all the detailed information on how to access Confluence. And the guys on site will be using Confluence for not only their charter development, but in some cases also the collaborative asset that they're developing. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Megan, for that. Okay, so moving moving along. So there are some of the key items um, that everybody should do. Uh, before they come to Action Week. And just before I kind of jump into the structure of the event, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, we did a number of trials uh, regarding how we should structure this event in order to make the event more valuable to all of our participants. So we look at things like, well, are we working on the right things and how do we make sure that we're working on the right things. So way back in September of this year, we ran a strategic workshop with um, many members of the board, the executive committee and uh, some industry analysts as well as key senior players from many of our member companies. And we evaluated the overall team forum roadmap of activities and things that are being done. And that is it is the output from that activity plus some additional re-evaluation sense that is driving what is getting done at Action Week. So that's the streams that we're going to cover shortly. And then if you think about, well, how should we operate at Action Week? Um, traditionally, it was very much simply a case of uh, each meeting organizing their own individual session. No, no overall portfolio uh, kind of management or value management from the entire event itself. And we, we really wanted to change this because we recognize that there's significant change in the industry. Uh, we recognize that you and all of your companies are under massive pressure to uh, get ahead of, not only to keep pace with, but get ahead of the pace of change within the industry and make sure what you're delivering is is meeting meeting those needs in a timely manner. So we learned from our members and we learned through trials and um, at, at, used at different workshops and face-to-face -face activities to basically apply a more agile concept into the event. And I, I prefer to use the word agile concept or methodologies or principles because this isn't about software development. Um, we have a small stream on, on API development, but for the most part, we're just taking the principles of, of Agile and applying them to the event as they make sense based on our trials and experiences that we've had so far. And to that end, there's a strong emphasis on making sure that uh, we have the right consumers uh, we, we've a lot of talk gone into who are who are the consumers of the product, of of the output of best practices and standards. How do they consume that material, and then how best should we develop that appropriate content um, and ensure that it meets those needs? So this allows us to this brings us back to the kind of roles that Megan was talking about earlier, and you will see more emphasis on different people playing different roles as a result of the need to be clear on who is playing what role within within the event. Um, so we start off the event on the Monday morning. We have a newcomer session. It will cover broadly what we're covering here, mostly in a, more, in, a, in a more rapid way. But the additional activity that we do at that event is we have quite a number of staff and we can talk one-to-one -one with any of the new members to evaluate. Let's say, for example, you come to the event and you have a number, you have a checklist yourself of what you want to achieve over the course of the week. It can be 
it can vary from what activity you want to participate and drive value for within our collaborative streams, but also things like who you want to work with and who you need to meet and things like that. So we can work with you to give you advice on how to get the most out of your week. Okay, so that we can run that as a one-to-one -one activity. And then we jump into an opening session. This, this provides, this is the kind of grand opening where everybody attends uh, the first session. And we provide a lot of industry context into this event. And it's uh, this year our keynote speaker will be Laurent Leboucher. Uh, he is the VP of um, APIs with Orange. And Laurent has provided a lot has provided a lot of strategic influence into to inform collaboration, not only in his role from Orange, but also as the chair from the SAS. So his opening presentation will focus on the industry shifts as he sees it and the Orange strategy to um, in reaction to that to those changes. Megan also mentioned that we have uh, project sessions and just so we kind of have a degree of distinction between project sessions and open sessions. There are sessions that are open, uh, meaning that um, they, they're not actually developing a contribution from that team to the forum. They're actually exploring, they're planning, they're evaluating, they're validating they're prioritizing. So that's that Monday session here on the green, running right up until uh, 11 a.m. on the Tuesday morning. And that session will be a structured session, uh, somewhat iterative in its approach, but very much based uh, focused on ensuring that we're driven by the right business needs. And what I mean by that is that there is an actual business context. So, for example, the IoT, uh, which is the Internet of Things and Open Digital, and customer centricity programs use a series of business canvases um, to drive what their team are working on. And uh, this is a great way to ensure that before we develop anything, that we're evaluating and making sure that we're developing the right content for the right industry audience and understand that audience needs and have that audience there as much as possible and can continuously discuss with that audience so that basically making sure that uh, that whole team end to end are working much closer together. So throughout that one day session we will uh, go through a, a structured and staged activity of re-evaluating uh, any new changes that all of the companies who are uh, probably working together for the first time face to face are now seeing and making sure any changes or, or new prioritizations coming from industry are adopted into our plans and uh, user stories and canvases will be used to uh, structure that. If you have not come across the business canvas before, I do suggest you look up the Ostevalder business canvas. Um, there was a blog on Inform last week, on Team Inform's Inform, and they uh, included an entire video uh, from Ostevalder explaining the value of the canvas and how it helps them to understand business models and apply it uh, to new to new digital ecosystems and things like that. So very, very interesting video which I recommend. Um, so that's the Monday, that Monday session running right up until 11 a.m. on Tuesday is an open session because it's not actively developing content. Um, so people will choose what stream they want to participate in here, right here on, at, at 11 a.m. on Monday, and they will get involved with that stream and they will participate in this exploratory and, and prioritization session. If, however, during the Monday you find, well, actually, this stream is not the most appropriate stream for me, you can move to a different stream. So particularly, take, for example, something like Zoom. There are three kind of business driving themes under Zoom. There's also a uh, foundational studies working group under Zoom and there's a stream on, on security for Zoom. If you find on the Monday that you feel you're not in the appropriate one, then just by all means move. What we are looking to do though from the Tuesday is that people commit to the theme to the team that they choose, 
where they feel they can add the most value and get the most value back to their organization. And really what that's about is to ensure that each of the teams get the opportunity to maximize um, the potential of all the expertise that we have at the event at Action Week. You will be, if you haven't been to an Action Week event before, you will be pleasantly surprised by the caliber of all of our attendees, and I'm sure including yourselves, um, at the event. So getting that value from that collective intelligence and expertise is really important and providing the right structure mechanisms for that is, is, is a large part of the reasoning uh, for some of these changes. So running, so each of these streams will have their own leader and they will work in an iterative way to build out and develop uh, with the team basically what they have said they have will do uh, against their own objectives laid out by the team themselves over the course of that Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday and Thursday. These blue sessions, they're all open general sessions. So we'll have one on Wednesday afternoon, one Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon, 5, 5 and 5.30. And they're a great opportunity for people to evaluate and monitor what's going on across the breadth of the event over the course of the week. So while you might have one area where is really important to you and you feel that's where I, as a you know, as an expert, can lend the most value, I would like to monitor all these other projects because, of course, there are relationships between all of the projects in some fashion. Um, so that's a great way. Those stand-ups at the end of each day are a great way to evaluate uh, what's going on at the other, at the um, across the entire breadth of the program. Friday's a mixed bag. Most of the activities will finish on the Thursday night, and the focus on the Thursday night wrap-up will be for each of the teams basically to show off what they've achieved over the course of the week. And that's um, there's a bit of a build-up towards that and a bit of excitement towards that to see how did everybody get on. Um, we will be running an element of, uh, during the stand-ups, there's also an opportunity to provide feedback and that's that's a great learning opportunity. So we have, we do want to um, share our best practices, share uh, people's expertise and this opportunity to provide feedback is is a key element of that as well. Uh, I've mentioned prizes. That's a you know that's something we do. Uh, we have done in the past is to kind of recommend or highlight what team really outshone, if it's possible, a single team really went way over above and beyond with regards to their development efforts. They might have used some cool techniques or whatever. So there will be some recognition for the team who who excel. Um, on the Friday session, uh, it's mostly at this point focused around frameworks meetings and some catalysts. So I just want to be aware if somebody is booking on Friday just to do a catalyst, you would need to make sure that the catalyst you are participating in or have an interest in is definitely meeting on the Friday. Not all catalysts meet on Friday. Some of the catalysts are actually uh, planning to do some of their scoping and development work throughout Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and some of them are working in the evenings to do the catalyst pieces. So do be aware of that. We are going to have a near the registration on site, we're going to have a, a board which will list out all of the current catalysts that are in play for Team Forum Live in Nice in June and who is the key lead contact for that. And um, that will be your way really of either signing up for a particular catalyst or trying to get in touch with a particular lead. We will also have Jean-Pierre on site and he'll be wearing a big Catalyst t-shirt so that he, he stands out from the crowd. So if you have any questions or really want to um, leverage Jean-Pierre to put you in touch with the right people, by all means do. And there will be a lot of staff on site supporting the event, not a lot, but a good few staff on site supporting the event and we're all more than happy to help you um, uh, in that regard as well. So that gives you an overview and this is simply another view towards the same thing as to trying to help you get a feel for for the flow of the event. Um, like Megan said, almost all of our programs fit neatly into uh, three strategic 
programs, if you will. I mean, Agile IT is is really the foundations of of TM4, and where we've been looking at cost reduction and risk reduction and best process management and uh, improved information management within an internal organisation for many many years. Um, but their their focus in this event is a mixture of um, the Agile IT, the Zoom project, the Zero uh, Touch Orchestration and Operation Management, and there's also some frameworks project work, which we'll get into as well. There's the Open Digital Program, and that that's quite a broad program. So there's the kind of Open Digital Foundation work of the Digital Services Reference Architecture, the B2B2X work, um, the open digital API work, but then also there is a digital services toolkit work, um, which is really looking at the foundations of frameworks and how it applies in a digital services scenario, and then also how it subsequently supplies to particular use cases or business canvases for different industry verticals like e-health and smart utilities and things like that. Um, and the customer centricity program, again, they use the business canvas to drive their direction of the program. And um, they're looking at uh, multiple different things. There, there's kind of uh, multiple ways of looking at the customer centricity. There's new work that they want to develop, omni-channel best practice and 360 view the customer. But they also have a lot of cross linkages across these other programs. So they uh, are working heavily uh, with the IoT program and um, with regards to how does Open Digital and how does NFV impact metrics and uh, data analytics and things like that. So that's just a view of the overall flow. And then you get into your iterations and retrospectives and stand-ups. So I hope that view is useful. It is intended really just to give you another perspective on, on a very similar topic. If you go to the Action Week Agenda at a Glance website, in the top right hand corner there is a button called More Detailed View. In there, we are continuously maintaining that more detailed view as more detail is becoming available about what exactly the teams will do, will do on site, who will lead each session, what experts they need at different times. Um, this is one of the summary sheets towards the start of that um, document, and it gives you it gives you much stronger view as to well what's going to go on at any particular point in time, how many things in parallel are going on, and where do I what choices do I need to make? So these are the types of choices that you need to make. Under customer centricity, there are four streams running all week. That's from Monday at 11 a.m. until. Thursday evening at 5 p.m. Under IoT and Open Digital, there are two streams running all week. Under Agile IT, the main piece here is the TM Forum API work is positioned here, but there's also frameworks is, is clearly an element of Agile IT, where really it, they feed each other in some respects. Under Zoom, there are actually five streams now, this NFV and security one are only meeting for one day. I believe that's still holding at the Wednesday. These three streams align directly with the um, kind of major objectives of the program, operations transformation for digital ecosystem, end-to-end -end virtualization management, and virtualization operations readiness. And a V Zoom foundation work is the information model, security work, policy work, API work that really needs to feed across all of the other three uh, primary objectives. And there is a privacy stream running all week where they're focused on the privacy dashboard. The frameworks team, how they're operating for the week is that they intend to, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they're going to spread themselves out across all of the streams uh, from customer centricity right down to Zoom, okay? Because a lot of that work needs frameworks expertise um, to support it directly into that team. Then on, thir on Thursday, the frameworks team will work together themselves, bringing back all the new requirements that they have gained from the, uh, each of these kind of business dri driving th themes, and they will work on Thursday and Friday uh, on planning out and developing their future uh, Frameworks 15 release. 
just to kind of point out a couple of other items, on that agenda you will see links like this, join the project. So these links will bring you directly to the project you need to join for the, for the particular stream. My recommendation is that before you come inside, you will have a look at these agenda, this kind of high-level summary agenda, and evaluate where it makes sense for you to get involved. Select at least one, maybe two streams for which appear the most appropriate. And um, particularly when you look at the proposed deliverables, this should give you an indication of whether it's the right place for you or not. If you are not uh, comfortable with making that decision beforehand, you're more than welcome to reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with the respective lead. Um, or, you know, maybe we need to have a conversation first in order to do that. I'm happy to do that as well. Um, one other point as well. So we have proposed deliverables. Megan mentioned that we are contribution driven. Um, in the so at, at Action Week, a lot of companies and people who are coming to the event, they would evaluate well what are the topics being covered and if they have a written contribution or they would create a written contribution based on work that they have done within their own organization and they would submit that contribution ahead of time if you have if you evaluate these proposed deliverables and you decide well actually we've done a lot of work on that and we really would like to see that become standard within the industry because it makes sense that we're all operating at on at the same operating the same on, on that particular thing, um, I suggest you go to the respective project and as Megan mentioned, there's a contribution tab there. You submit that contribution and you select uh, Team Action Week Lisbon 2015 as, uh, as one of the drop down options. And then it's available for all of the participants at the event to review ahead of time. And that's an important requirement for particularly people who are not English speaking people do like to absorb these contributions ahead of time. The Monday or the during the course of Monday or Tuesday, those contributions will be evaluated within the respective stream. Okay? So that's, and here, I just just for usability, I'm making things a little bit easier. This is exactly where you will find that Excel. Okay. Um, I've mentioned the fact that we have um, streams, multiple different streams. So, in order to help people manage their own stream, um, there will be badges available within the room of the stream that you're in. And if you choose okay, I've, I've decided this is definitely where I want to be for the rest of the week, I can add a lot of value here and um, and this is the right fit for me, then you, you uh, just take one of the badges uh, for that, that team and, and wear that badge. You will see people at the event wearing their badge. Why that's important? It's, it's actually particularly important when you consider people coming in to the room. So I mentioned that there's a lot of interactions across a lot of all of these programs and there is. And traditionally we would have managed that through having cross functional meetings where a whole team would meet a whole team from another from another um, project. With the volume of projects and the volume of interactions that's become uh, not really possible to manage and have the teams move forward as well. So what we've decided to try for this event and um, most of the leads are working to line up these nominations is that there would be nominations from the other team into one team. So say for example Rebecca on CEM and, and her members are working uh, at, at various points they will require that uh, there is a Zoom expert in the room and that there's an IoT expert in the room and having that person wear the appropriate badge helps people in the room to understand who's there and what role they're playing and that's, so that's a useful thing for people. Um, Megan mentioned the, the roles, again it's, it's really about what this is really about is to make sure that um, we have the best structure that we can have in place, that we make sure we are clear on who is going to adopt this work and if the discussion uh, is not able to move forward at any particular point in time, it's very useful for the, the team lead to refer to um, 
the first adopter, which is essentially a sponsored project, um, and gain their opinion, and that usually can move something forward. Uh, the session coordinator, the subject matter experts, and they will all be uh, identifiable. And during the registration process, you were asked if you had particular expertise, and that's that's a useful thing for other people to evaluate um, in order to make sure, like I said at the beginning, that the collective um, experience of the entire group is leveraged as much as, as, much as possible. And I'm sure that's, that's what you would want also, that um, you know, if you are a data analytics expert, it's great that you would be able to play that role not just into the data analytics team, but if that is needed across into another team at a particular point in time, it would be great to be able to play that role as well. So this is just an example, by way of example. Um, and it's really just to give some structure and thought um, for the leads and, and to recognize that this is what they're doing. They're basically trying to plan out the day. They are thinking about what it is that they need to achieve. They will do team retrospectives as well as the kind of uh, larger group retrospective and, and opportunity to ask questions. And that's an important way to make sure that you have everybody kept pace with what's happening um, and also really to evaluate does anything need to change. So while we have plans in place, it's like um, somebody said the best laid plans are all fine until the first shot, uh, uh, shot is fired. I think th there will be an element of that. Um, so there is a distinct plan in place for all of the programs and, and the event as a whole, but we are accepting the fact that we may need to change that on site. And so I guess that's a kind of a, a style uh, warning, if for lack of a better word, that, that I'd like to lay out there and make people aware of, that there will be an iterative and a, a feel of, of uh, movement and change, and really it's how we communicate those that's really important on site. I've mentioned that the programs will be driven by user stories, and the user story really is um, takes on this format here as a I want to so that. So it's it's really understanding who is the uh, consumer or user of the output, what is it they're trying to do, um, and to what end, to what purpose are they trying to do it, so that it's it's understood in, in normal layman terms uh, before getting into kind of the real technical specifics and requirements of, of the activity. Estimates, they'll be, this will be used uh, by some and not by others. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but there may be estimates. So, you know, a team leader may say, well, how long do you think that's going to take you? And they, they're basically looking to get a feel for um, the overall structure and how they're going to plan out their day. So just go with it really and, and um, help them as best we can. So when prioritizing, um, again, this is guidance really to the session leads, but I just want to, as new newcomers, to be, to be aware that this is something that will happen, that there will be a degree of prioritization. And that's really to help people understand, to help the team focus on what is essentially the minimum viable product so that by the Thursday evening um, they will have advanced further on the the most important things and that's really about getting focus onto the most critical areas. Uh, these are just some nice views. I would be very impressed if we end up with something like this, if we end up with some kind of structure like this, um, but it's just by way of example that's how agile themes work in reality, they they break things down into smaller chunks and they uh, organize them in this fashion and they and they work through them. Um, there is obviously a lot more to the whole concept than that, but that's just uh, one facet of it. The retrospective is an important facet of it. It is very important that we stop and think and and learn from what we've done and see how we can improve. So this will be the common structure for the retrospective uh, throughout the week. Um, so you will see this used a lot, probably within the team sessions as well as during the, the general stand-ups. 
so the stand-ups we have we have kind of have two sets of stand-ups. The stand-ups within the teams will will most likely happen in the morning after people have done um, their have had the opportunity to think about their activity of the day before and um, discuss that over their evening meal with their with their colleagues and that. Um, so the, the morning sessions are most likely within the team themselves. I will be having a stand up with session leads, um, the, the, the collaboration staff and session leads will get together and that's primarily to make sure that uh, session leads are very well supported on site. Um, it is a tough role that they're playing and uh, we try and do everything we can to to make sure that they have everything that they need to be successful. Uh, so we will have a morning session with, with the session leads. The evening ones that I mentioned at the five o'clock is focused on really sharing information across the entire group and I do think that's a a very good one and there's a lot of value in it uh, for, for everybody but it's also an opportunity for you maybe you see something that you hadn't realized was going to be covered somewhere else and uh, you gain that insight well at least then you know who to go talk to um, and there's a lot of networking goes on over the evenings and that's a great opportunity then to, to try and catch up with that person. These are extremes I, I'm not sure we're going to achieve that but it's, we know what we're aiming for, which is important. And these are I've just included these by way of example so you get a good sense of the overall structure and flow for the event. So it is a different style. Um where confidence is to write for us um on a number of fronts. It will keep us focused on the right things and that's probably the most important thing that we have put significant effort into making sure that each of the teams are populated with um, the right companies and people who are looking to adopt this work directly into their own R&D within their organization um, in, in the near term, not, not in the long term. So this is, it, it's structured quite differently but it's really about ensuring we stay pace with the industry and uh, keep keeping ensuring that we're constantly abreast of any new changes that are happening, uh, building out the intelligence of the groups so that we um, uh, can create more of the right content but primarily have more of the right perspectives onto the work. That's really what this is about. As an industry collaboration group, it's really important that we have diversity of perspectives on our work. And, and that's where all of our members come in to and come into play really is and this is also a, a benefit of, of being the mem being a, a member company uh, this is the opportunity to influence that future best practices and standards work all of the work that's created at Action Week will um, assuming it gets to a standard of quality that uh, the team themselves decide are, they're happy with will be included in the Frameworks 15 release which will be launched at TM Forum live in June. So that's, um, that's the key areas that I wanted to cover. I hope you found this useful. Um, it's really intended to give you a flavor, like I mentioned, of the, of the style of the event, what types of things you need to be thinking about ahead. Um, so in summary, you should look at the detailed agenda, evaluate which streams uh, make the most sense for you to spend most of your time. Um, evaluate that, join that respective project, be familiar with the IPR um, framework under which we operate. Now, we have it set up in such a way that it is not inhibiting within the teams, but it is certainly uh, a key, it is certainly the key umbrella under which we all operate and it's the reason why we can collaborate as um, as distinct companies under under a single framework. Um, so do just be aware of that, be aware of uh, the fact that when you join the project that it's your company IP contact that will approve you into that project, um, etc. So they're, they're the key things really to keep in mind. And if you have any questions, okay, so some people are saying if I uh, just, I can only make it for three days, is that a 
problem. So it's, uh, the, the event is certainly designed around being present at the event for four days, um, but it's, it, it, it's not a huge issue if you can't make it for four days, put it that way, and you should still try and make the most of whatever time you can spend at the event. Um, you, what you might think about though, if, if you are coming for a shorter than say four or five days, do think about, well how am I going to continue this afterwards, what am I, um, am I deciding to be an active participant of this project into the future? Think about that, talk to your team lead on site, um, uh, or talk to any of the staff, myself included, and you know we can help you with that. But the main thing is, if, if you do have to cut it short, think about what what am I committing to beyond the event so that I can continue that relationship, continue making sure that I provide that expertise into the team and also gain that value back into my own organization because you will feel the the value, the power really of of that collective expertise in the room and it's uh, there's a lot of great learning that will be had that you can bring back to your own organizations. Um, just one more question. A couple of more questions here, with just a moment. What time do sessions end on Wednesday? Uh, main sessions end on Wednesday at 5 p.m. At 5 then we will do the general stand-up and that will run from 5 until 5.30 and that will be the close of the activities on Wednesday. Some particular projects are choosing to meet on um, on Wednesday night to work on their catalyst, so just do be aware of that. I missed me. Is yeah, we're going the presentation materials and the recording will be sent out to everyone who registered for the event. So that's no problem. They will be issued within twenty four hours directly to your email. No problem. Okay, so I hope everybody found that useful. By all means, if you've got further questions, you can reach out to myself. My email is there, or Megan, and Megan's uh, email is mlunde at tmforum.org. So I hope to see you, see you all on site, and if there's any additional preparation activities you would like to um, try and take care of ahead of time and you need any support with that, please do contact us. We're more than happy to help. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.